down the home stretch right now it's North Carolina setting the pace all alone at nine and two. These two teams are tied for third. The winner will be tied with Florida State for second just one game behind the Tar Heels. Hi everybody. Welcome to Charlottesville. Sean McDonough along with Dan Dockish joined in just a moment by Allison Williams. Delighted to have you with us. Yes, 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 yes. Tonight's Sonic Showdown Dan. Louisville playing very well. They've won seven of their last eight, scoring a lot of points. But tonight against Virginia, playing a team that gives everybody fits, particularly Louisville, they've struggled to score historically against the Cavaliers. Everybody has. I mean, you're talking about the best defensive program in the country. Tony Bennett's guys stay in a stance. They get in front of you. This is a little misleading. You see those last five games against the bottom feeders of the ACC other than Duke. Louisville, to me, has to make shots, and that's not their strength. Everybody has to make shots when you play against Virginia. 53 points the season low in their meeting earlier this season at Louisville and the Cardinals shorthanded even more tonight Allison Williams. Yeah Sean Louisville down to just seven scholarship players following the suspension of two key players Dang Adele and Mango Matthew will not play in tonight's contest. They've been suspended for a violation of team rules after they broke curfew on Saturday night. So that's a huge loss for Louisville who's already without two guards. Tony Hicks has missed the previous two games with a broken hand. Quentin Snyder has been out since the middle of January with a strained hip flexor. And keep in mind, guys, in the five games without Snyder, Adele and Matthew have been scoring an average of 27 points. So they are losing significant offensive production against the number one scoring defense in the country as they take on Virginia. So a short bench for Rick Patino tonight. He'll play a few walk-ons who have not seen much playing time. Totally changed his game plan, Dan. He said they were going to come out and play like West Virginia plays this year. Press after makes and misses. Try to speed the game up against Tony Bennett's team and create some offense through their defense, but he can't use that game plan tonight because of the lack of available bodies. Yeah, and the problem you have, again, I, you know, I said making shots. It's kind of obvious, but I'm talking about jump shots. I'm talking about 15 to behind the three-point line, 15 feet to behind the three-point line, and, and really Really, Adele was playing great, and he, he, him being out, him doing whatever stupid thing that he did, um, kills him in certain ways against this team. Other teams you can get by with. See the starting lineup for Virginia. Mariel Shayok with the shot clock under five, the layup, and that is typical Virginia basketball. Use the clock and shorten the game in some ways. Yeah, but you cannot, you cannot, if you're Louisville, let the ball get into the middle of the floor. It has to play on the side towards the baseline. Donovan Mitchell, he's the leading scorer for Louisville. David Levitch, a walk on, handed it off to V.J. King. Mitchell missed a three, and the rebound down to Mary L. Shayok. Devin Hall. The most improved member of the Virginia Cavaliers. A lot of great players off of last year's team they needed to replace. And Hall's been a guy who has stepped up. Parentes, best three point shooter in the history of the school, a little bit short with his first try of the night. Mitchell all the way. And it rolled off and then batted out of bounds by V.J. King. You know, you mentioned talking to Coach Patino, and they're not going to play fast. They're going to play fast when Mitchell has the ball. When he has the ball, He's going to take it as deep as he can. And the other thing they're going to do is they're going to keep the ball popping. They don't want the ball stopped and then reset in the offense. Isaiah Wilkins took his eye off the pass. Mitchell. Wilkins back there to contest it. He's their leading shot blocker for the season. Isaiah Wilkins, junior out of Lilburn, Georgia. Yeah, they got a piece of that. Well, the last time these two teams played, Dan, earlier this season at Louisville, 10 players played for each team as Devin Hall has the first bucket of the second bucket of the night for Virginia, his first bucket. 20 players total played. One player reached double figures in the game, and it was the man who just scored for Virginia, Devin Hall, who had 10 points. Well, if 10 players play for Louisville, I think a manager is going to get in there. Levich for three. I love him. Like he clicks his heels, he makes. Now he's not gonna go make a great athletic play, but I'm telling you, that's the best shooting walk on in the country. He's not a walk on anymore, but when he squares it up, Sean, it's automatic, and he's the best horse handicapper in Louisville. Really? Yeah, in the city. Wow. 
Parentes. Now he, he travels. Jamie Lucky with the call. With Ted Valentine and Mike Eads, the other officials. How does one ascertain that? Now you know every citizen of Louisville, and you know exactly their handicap no, and skills. No, but I talked to Bobby Velvano, and he gave you that information. And then I ran it by his mom and dad, and his mother got significantly embarrassed by that, so I knew it was true. Shayok tripping as he crossed midcourt. Parentes, the senior point guard, had a. Terrific career, nearly threw it away, defended by Donovan Mitchell. Shot clock at 12. Wilkins missed a corner two, and it got tipped around to Mitchell. Jalen Johnson. Louisville, number four in the poll that just came out today. That is their highest ranking of the season. They're behind Gonzaga, Villanova, and Kansas. The line drive shot wouldn't go for the freshman out of Cleveland, V.J. King. You know what you're not going to see out of Louisville? Ball screen. Reason why they feel, Louisville staff feels like Virginia traps them, and there was almost one on the other end. Parentes with Johnson lunging out at him, buries his first three of the night. Rick Patino isn't going to wait for the media timeout, which would have come on the first whistle under 16 minutes left in the half. Seven to three, Cavaliers early at home. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by eBay. Find new, unique, and everything in between on eBay. And in part by the $4 Real Deal. Four items for just four bucks at Carl's Jr. and Hardy's and Land Rover, above and beyond. Tonight's game is part of ESPN's Journey to the Tourney, presented by Sonic. It's our season-long spotlight on games that will impact the NCAA tournament. This one certainly involves two teams that will be in the NCAA tournament, and Dan, two of the very best teams in the country. I don't know how they calculate efficiency, so I'm going to skip by that. But points allowed seems pretty important to me, and they're both pretty darn good. I am so with you on that whole efficiency thing, points per 100 possessions and all that kind of stuff. I know this. Both of these teams play great individual defense. They help one another out. They're rarely out of position, which means you're probably a pretty good defensive team. Virginia fouls, so we'll check in with Allison Williams. The foul on Hall, his first. Well, Rick Pitino is absolutely infuriated with how his team has played defense early on, especially the mental breakdowns. He told a couple of the players, stop making excuses. That is your man. You cannot continue to make the same mistake three times in a row. Guys are wide open, and you're just standing there. You know, you know part of that was Louisville's in some kind of matchup zone that not everybody totally understood. Guys were passing other guys off. Some were staying with their man. They were more confused than the defense. Crowd thought Ryan McMahon double dribbled. Honest Mahmoud now handed it off for Mitchell. It spins off. Kept alive by Ray Spalding, but he knocked it off the shot clock. You know, one of the things in this game, Sean, is the best offense for Louisville is going to be transition. The second best might be offensive rebounding. Just pounding the backboard, whether it's Spalding or Mahmoud or maybe Donovan Mitchell, doesn't matter. Well, they're going to need Mitchell to have a good night, you would think, with the depleted roster. And he's off to an 0 for 4 start from the field for the Louisville Cardinals. Parentes from the elbow might have been hit on the elbow and a chance for an old fashioned three point play. A little high ball screen, 2 3 zone. It was a matchup. They ball screen McMahon. You're going to see it right there. McMahon recovers, but he gets him on the arm. This is a cleaner zone, this possession, than what Louisville had been playing. As I said, I think Louisville's players were more confused than Virginia's players, and Louisville was the one playing the defense. Hoop scoop must be a new wrinkle this year. I haven't done a lot of basketball games yet this year. I don't remember that. That's a nice little graphic bit of information. Well, scoop. Are we supposed to announce that it's on the screen or is it pretty self explanatory? Yeah, it was in big print. Yeah. I think most people probably could have read that, but I just want to call attention to it in case it comes up again. Betting it does. Honest Mahmood working on Jack Salt off the mark. Here comes Virginia already up. 
10 to 3, which I believe now makes this a higher scoring game than the one they played in Louisville. <laughs> On December 28th, that was actually a 61-53 win for Virginia in a tough place to play inside the beautiful KFC Yum Exclamation Point Center in downtown Louisville. Parentes missed the three. Spalding got nothing and doesn't like it. On the run, Louisville and VJ King lays it in. Yeah, there's so many guys like Spalding was running like crazy. King was faster than everybody on Virginia, and that's exactly how Louisville has to play this game. Sounds weird, seven players, eight players, but you got to speed it up. King getting better and better as his freshman season goes along. He's a McDonald's All-American. Ty Jerome's pass deflected. A lot of length inside there with Spalding and Mahmoud and Mitchell finishes at the other end for Louisville. Hey, Parentes did something you hardly ever see. The old back to the offensive guy transition defense didn't work out well for him. See the huge numbers for Mitchell. Become a much better shooter last year. Really an acrobatic dunker. Most of his buckets around the rim. He worked very hard on his shot and he's become an excellent three point shooter. This Louisville is, foul. Watch this here. Watch this apprentice 32. Now he's just flat going to turn his back. He never turned around because of how fast Mitchell is. It's hard to guard somebody with your back turned to him. Mm -hmm. I don't care the sport. You can do it in football. Corner Coach Knight didn't man. teach you that at Indiana. That wasn't one of the principles of defense. You could do it once. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when people ask you, can you say that on TV? So you can say anything on TV once. One time. Darius Thompson's come in off the Virginia bench. The last foul was on V.J. King. Louisville now with a three ball could tie it up as we approach seven minutes gone by. He's the man to shoot the three, Ryan McMahon, but well off. He was way behind the arc. I'm not sure he knew where he was, and he had pre, pre what's the right word? Presupposed in his own mind. Mm -hmm. He was pre. I don't know. He was going to shoot it no he matter what. He made up his mind. Yeah. He was going to yeah. shoot it regardless of his position yeah. on the court. Thank you. No problem. There's Thompson. His minutes been down a little bit. Jared Reuter in the game, number 31 for UVA. And the runner wouldn't go for Thompson. McMahon, a transition three. Mitchell, the offensive rebound. And it's tipped back up and in by Spalding, who has a seven foot four inch wingspan. That's almost a perfect possession. Sprint it down, get a good look from a good shooter, and just crash the offensive boards. That way you don't have to play against a set Virginia defense. Six unanswered points for Louisville. The Cardinals within one. Jerome, he's a freshman, been getting more minutes and excelling lately for UVA. Tough shot for Parentes. Yeah, he thought he got fouled. He about halfway through that shot squared his shoulders and was serious about making it. He was thinking he was going to the line after he made it, gave the official a look. Parentes has eight of the 12. He's had to become more of a scorer this year without guys like Brogdon and Gill and Toby. Stalwarts the last few years for Virginia. Mitchell another bucket to get them back within one. You've been doing Mitchell's games. The improvement of him is unbelievable, mm -hmm. right? Is, is it is it a matter of him just feeling like, for lack of a better word, the man? I think Confidence? that's probably some of it, but the hard work on his shot, not content just to be a dunker. And here's Jerome. Missed the three. Now a chance for the lead for the Cardinals. Mahmoud from Egypt. Getting banged by Reuter and a shot blocked from behind by Wilkins there to help on the defensive end and it's laid in by Darius Thompson. Darius Thompson same thing that McMahon did. McMahon was going to shoot it no matter what. Thompson was going to catch it and drive it no matter what and just whipped everybody to the basket. B.J. King, that's a three. And Louisville back even now at 14 apiece as we approach the midpoint of this first half. I'll tell you what, one adjustment Rick Pitino made with Reuter in the game, they are ball screening because he plays more of a center field. He doesn't come out and trap, and it costs Virginia three right there. 
Louisville just one and four against Virginia under Rick Pitino third year in the ACC for the Cardinals Darius Thompson he's a streaky player when we talked to the Virginia staff before the game tonight they said if he comes in hits a couple shots he may play more than he has recently funny how that works shocking Balding battle for it and Jerome was on the end line as he tried to gather it in when we come back set the DVR Dan Dockage best defensive team in the country every year why first thing is they keep you in front they keep you at arm's length it's called the pack line defense Dick Bennett Tony's father created the second thing is they do a great job of switching everything ball screen handoff they switch down screen they'll switch they never get out of position sometimes they switch to increase pressure and deny other times they switch to contain it is the best school team in the country on playing defense both against the screen and against the dribbler. And here's an example of what Dan Dockich is talking about. Of course, in some of the recent games, the last two losses at Villanova and at Syracuse, the defense hasn't been as good in the second half, but part of that, as Dan said at the top of Calhess, is the other team shooting the ball very well. Syracuse shot it phenomenally well in the come from behind win Saturday up in the Carrier Dome. Eight points now for B.J. King. So without Adele, without Mathiang, needing others to step up, King averages 6.3 as eight already tonight. Tariko would have telestrated. I wanted to telestrate, but my arms aren't long at all. Although mine are certainly longer than Tariko's, but <laughs> that telestrator is a long, long way away from here. And I was never good at art. Officials conferring Louisville ball. Ted Valentine telling Jamie Lucky set it the other way. One thing Louisville is doing a really good job of in half court defense here for the last couple of minutes. They've sped Louisville up. Virginia has that shot there. It looked like an open shot, but it was rushed around the basket. Usually Virginia plays at their own pace offensively. Levich, whoo, nice pass. King. Now Mahmoud shot clock at 10 nine minutes to go in the half Mahmoud down the lane to give Louisville a three point lead. This is a clinic on moving the ball from side to side and keeping it moving not getting it stuck so often Sean in college hoops man a guy catches the ball he hangs on to it waits for a ball screen none of that here but Louisville great job moving the ball. Kyle Guy in the game you must know him from Indianapolis Mr. Basketball Lawrence Central High School great shooter. He is probably the listener to your radio show. Salt surrounded by Louisville players, and then he got called for a foul for a takedown as it went the other direction, and the crowd not taking it with a grain of salt. Louisville out hustling. I mean, four guys, three guys all around the basketball, and look at this ball move. And this is after it's gone inside, outside. Everybody's a threat, passing it to the next guy. The ball's not getting stuck, and if you can get the ball in the middle, good things happen. I caught the, the listener. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell. Wow, finger roll, and Louisville has opened up a five-point lead. You know they're doing? They're moving the ball, and they're playing from the middle of the floor. And I'm telling you, if you let good players after movement, play in the middle of the floor you're going to have a real problem defensively I don't care who you are Virginia led by seven early they're a team that can be offensively challenged their leading scores per rent as 11.9 per game foul called on Levich as he was swiping hands with guy well, Donovan Mitchell's best player on the court he's the best player on the court most times and if you let the best player on the court get into the middle right there man you have no chance. You're either going to foul, give up a bucket, or both. Back in Charlottesville, Virginia, Big Monday presented by eBay. Rivalry week begins. Every announcer's least favorite week because it's hard to say rivalry week. And it's presented by Wendy's, which adds another R and W combination there, which can make it difficult. Kyle Guy. 
Ball moving quickly now for UVA. Guys are hot shooter of late right on cue. We're going to call that a pass because it would have been an air ball right on cue. Isaiah Wilkins in the right spot. You think that was a pass? I don't. No. No. No, no, no. Try to be charitable. Mahmoud. Boy, strong move. A little running hook that wouldn't go. He shot it over Mamadi Diakite, who's come in off the bench. Freshman heavily recruited by Louisville. Wilkins. That one popped out. Mahmoud tipped it out to Levich. You know, every loose ball, who's it going? At? Louisville. Louisville has pounded the defense, excuse me, offensive backboard. They've been more aggressive this entire game. Doesn't happen often to Virginia, but it's happening here. What a pass by Levich. Right on the money to the rim to Jalen Johnson. We were on the same angle as Levich. Levich, there was only a very small window to throw that into. Short it was stolen, a little bit too high out of bounds. Defenders all in between. Perfect. Looked like that pass Matt Ryan threw last night to Julio Jones. That was more Julio. Oh, right? how about Julio? Oh. Wow. What and a Edelman came back and made another one. Heartbreaking loss for them. Your heart has to ache for the Falcons and their fans. But what a performance by Julio Jones. And Falcon fans represented here tonight. This is a great pass because you saw the, 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 def the defender was back there and paying attention. But you starting to try Diakite? I was. Sure you had it. I, yeah, I wasn't sure I had Diakite. I practiced all day too. <laughs> How about you want this one? Who, who shot that one? Hall. I think I, think I can handle Hall. You got Hall the rest of the night. Five you points for Devin Hall. He's a redshirt junior from Virginia Beach. Two-point game as we come up on six minutes remaining in the first half. King fouled on a reach in. Parentes raised his hand. There were a couple of defenders nearby. Here's Allison. Well, Rick Patino much calmer now on the Louisville bench and during that last timeout. Really pleased with how his team is playing offensively. Their ability to drive and drive and pass to the corner. Just kept telling his guys what a great job they're doing. Also really happy with the deflections they've been able to come up with. Parentes raised his hand, but they gave the foul to Diakite. And the free throw good by King. Well, Rick Pitino likes this team, loves the attitude. He was surprised by what happened on Saturday night when two of his key players violated curfew. He said, dang, Adele is the least likely to do that. He wasn't quite as surprised that Mathiang might be out at night. However, comma, uh, he's been a two-year team captain. Mathiang, by the way, had his captaincy stripped for the rest of the year. They made Mitchell a team captain. So they hope it's a momentary hiccup. But loves the attitude of the team, loves the talent of this team, and uh, this looks to me like a Louisville team when they have all their parts back that could make another deep run, maybe even a Final Four run. I think there's no doubt about it. And you know, I always like when people say, oh, "That's not who he is." Well, it is. That's what he did it. Mm -hmm. The one thing that Rick Pitino disappointed Rick was coming back from Boston College. He was all enthusiastic about his team, like. He was happy. Now, Rick Patino and most coaches, as you know, are never happy this time of year. Everybody's miserable. But he was happy, told the guys, hey, we're going to have an early practice, get some rest, and we're going to leave for Virginia. Next thing you know, two guys stayed out way too late. Mm -hmm. yeah, an early practice Sunday. How are you for the man bun? Well, I am not one to criticize on anybody's hairstyle. You know, if I had here, I probably wouldn't do this, but you know, I'm right with you. Who am I to judge? I'm, quite I'm, frankly, I'm quite not, obviously, I'm not judging mm -hmm. at all. And See, I I'd no like problem. to take that because it would fit, you know, perfectly on <laughs> some of the bald spots. There's too much room to cover, though. I admire the courage because you know when you have that here, do you? Every opposing arena you go, you, in, even in your home arena, you're going to get signage. Some of it pro. Some of the anti bun. There was a really good article by Greg Doyle, Indy Star, about him, and just that thing right there. And his mother said he's just never cared. Always wants to be different. There's Jay Henderson who had it swatted away by Isaiah Wilkins. Henderson, one of those walk-ons who is seeing action tonight, who probably wouldn't have played, and it's going to be a short stint for him, were it not for those suspensions tonight. 
How about Jay Henderson came in, shot up a three, and then the next time he touched it, he went to the rim. I, I can respect that. Hey, you don't get many opportunities. He knocks that three in, maybe makes a layup. He might play the rest of the game. See, I'd be more in tune with that hairstyle. Oh, yeah. if I had hair and could do anything with it, I'd probably go with that. Oh, there is no doubt. I would love to have that hair. Mitchell. Yes. Middle on the, the top of the key. That's an example of a shot that perhaps he wouldn't have felt comfortable taking last year. Let him in the middle of the floor. You have real problems. I mean, you have to keep him out of there. He's explosive enough to go beach on the side, but he's deaf in the middle. Shayok. He's a Canadian now Parentas. Hall that's big Mott Stockman out there on him who looks toward the bench as if to say I don't want to be guarding somebody way up there at the top of the key Stockman another guy who's played in only 15 of their previous 23 games but in there tonight out of necessity. The bucket for Diakite was his first and the response by Brian McMahon. <laughs> Freshman out of Sarasota, Florida, redshirt freshman. He's missed a couple and doesn't bother him. Like he backed up against Virginia right there to give himself more room. Usually you move into the defense, stay behind the three point line. He backed up. McMahon, by the way, has not made a two point field goal this year. Well, he knows his strengths. Yes. He's taken four two point shots and gone 0 for 4. Coming into tonight he had taken 39 shots 35 of them threes. King shuffled his feet as he ran into the defense of Mariel Shayok. Timeout 340 to go first half here in Charlottesville. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy. Proud sponsor of the 2017 John R. Wooden Player of the Year and Chevrolet. More J.D. Power initial quality awards than any other brand four years in a row. Uh, hold your thought. All right. Because we do need to do the game summary. And uh, the number that jumps out of me seven turnovers committed already by Virginia team that commits fewer than 10 per game only Michigan nine and a half fewer turnovers per game in the entire country. I'm, I'm telling you it's the first time I, mean, I said this earlier it's the first time I've seen Virginia sped up offensively and when they've driven they've driven kind of with their head down it's a little that same zone now they have a little more organized and I'm not sure Virginia knows what Louisville's in. Do you remember the most points you ever scored against. Purdue. It wasn't about scoring. It was about wins, Sean. We just, you know, uh, ten. <laughs> <laughs> and don't look that up because no. I think I'm lying. <laughs> I'll take the under. King rattles one home. But well, you said that like you know. I don't know. Are you one of those guys who can remember details of just about every game you played in or coached? I can remember losses. Mm -hmm. Details of losses, absolutely. Can't can't remember wins. I, 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 it's a true story. This is what coaches do. I, I think about four games every day, and they're all losses. Every day. I would ask you, do we have enough time? Is that the subject? One of them's time? here. One of them's 1984. There's a banner up here that I gave Virginia with a turnover late in the game, sent them to the Final Four. Mm. Every night. Kent Needland was the kid's name. Stole it from him. Minute 18 to go. Let's get back to the game. Yeah, well, maybe we'll save those other three for future big Mondays. <laughs> Nearing two minutes to go in the half. Louisville started behind 10 to 3. Looked disjointed without two of their key players suspended tonight. Two others injured, but they have gotten it together. Mitchell had it pop out from long range. And then Mahmoud called for a foul. Didn't look like any contact from here, but Jamie Lucky has Mahmoud for a foul. Rivalry Week rolls on tomorrow. That's Tuesday on ESPN with an SEC Big Ten doubleheader at 7. Malik Monk, number 15, Kentucky. Post LSU, when you read too slowly, they change the graphic to tell you to speed up, and I refuse to do it. Michigan State against a Michigan team, which does not turn it over. No, they don't turn it over, but they don't make many either. Michigan and Michigan State both desperate for a win. Michigan, I'll be there tomorrow night. They 
They got beat at home by Ohio State. Bad loss. Ohio State not very good. Mitchell, well, your game tomorrow night, the doubleheader tomorrow night, presented by CenturyLink on ESPN, of course, also streaming live on Watch ESPN, the ESPN app. Parentes all the way to the goal. And he got fouled. Rick Patino is going nuts with Donovan Mitchell because Parentes just competed. Mitchell was back on defense hanging out, and Parentes just blew by everyone. You see Mitchell's late there, number 45. And Patino didn't blame Henderson guarding the ball. He blamed Mitchell for jogging into the possession. Henderson called for his first foul. Parentes, excellent free throw shooter. You know what I like about Patino, and you've known him far longer than I have. He's short handed right now, but he doesn't care. Like, he brought Mitchell over and just got after him just now. He's not handling guys that he knows can take it with kid gloves. He knows Mitchell can take it. He's going to be a little softer maybe with others, but he's not afraid to go at a player, even shorthanded. Yeah, he expects when your name is called to go in and perform regardless of how little you played. Uh, Henderson, who just committed that last foul, had played 24 minutes all season long entering tonight. And Henderson got beat, so he comes out. Mitchell got called for a travel. Just the third Louisville turnover. Well, I'm not sure that was a travel. Rick Patino was talking about jab step, and that was a pretty good jab step. I've said this before, Sean. Nobody does better with individual instruction, individual moves than Rick Patino. Yeah, his players improve. Great technician of drills to improve fundamentals. Parentes and Wilkins on the rim to drop it home. And Rick Pitino at 62 has lost none of his energy or passion for the game. He's actually going to play in a 55 and over tournament in May. You ever seen in him South play? Florida. Same Whoa, pass. another beautiful pass by Levich to Jalen Johnson. Same exact pass. First time I ever met Rick Pitino, five star basketball camp. He had all these guys. I was a player. All, we all thought we were great. He took the best in the country, Aubrey Sherrod, Chris Mullen, all these guys out, and whipped them one on one when he was a head coach at Boston U. Unbelievable what he did to players as like a 25 year old. He was a fine player at UMass. Was he any good? He, he told me he was. He was good one on one. I don't know if he's any good in college. Everybody's good in college 20 years after. Final 10 seconds of the half. Parentes took a bump. And he'll go to the free throw line with 8.6 to go in the half. Jalen Johnson called for his first foul. Louisville's over the limit. Virginia has committed only three fouls in the half. And that's been one of their trademarks under Tony Bennett. One of the best defensive teams in the country. And they don't foul a lot. You know, fouling for Tony Bennett from his dad, Dick Bennett, is like turnovers on offense. You know, so often coaches, you know, go nuts on an offensive mistake. And defensively, unless a kid gets beat, they don't really go as crazy. But for Tony Bennett, a foul is a turnover. Do you like watching Virginia play? I do, because I appreciate yeah. team defense and unselfishness and the ball movement and the lack of hot dogging. I'm with you. They catch a lot of criticism, but not from me. I, I, they're fun to watch. But if I was a fan of Virginia, of course, we have to be impartial. <laughs> Offensive rebound by Salt. What you like more than anything else as a fan is winning, and that was a winning type play made by Salt, who doesn't score much, but he gives them a boost heading to the locker room. Well, in the first matchup with Virginia, Louisville manages 53 points in the game. They have 34 in the half, 13 more than they had at home in the first half on the 28th of December. Here's Allison. Coach Patino, you said you had to play Virginia differently. What have you done well offensively this Well, we're spacing the court. We're not really running plays as much as we are spacing and driving. 
We really did played a beautiful half. Outside of that one non-block out there, which my Egyptian center is going to pay at halftime. <laughs> uh, it was almost a perfect half by a depleted crew. I'm real proud of our guys. Okay, going forward, though, you do have a depleted crew. So without Adele and Matthew, what must you do? I just got to steal 30 seconds in a minute here and there. We're not in foul trouble. Virginia will lose when you don't put them to the line. We put them to the line a lot in that second half, and Parente's is not going to miss too many. Rick, thank you. Thank you. All right, Allison, thank you. At the half, Louisville leading 34-32. Now the halftime report with Carl, Jay, and Seth. Watching ESPN's Rivalry Week, presented by Wendy's. And rivalry starts start, 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 start. with Big Monday, presented by eBay. The Louisville Cardinals up to number four in the country, taking on the Virginia Cavaliers. They're ranked 12th at the half. 34-32 Louisville. Let's take a look at tonight's winning mix, brought to you by Chobani Flip and Dan Dockich, talking about Louisville's offense. Well, Louisville's offense has been ball movement, people movement, no plays, and you see leverage with a couple of nice plays there, and Rick Pitino has had to change things around because he's got a bunch of guys out there that really haven't played together, but that kid has. Donovan Mitchell in the middle of the floor, and V.J. King in the middle of the floor have been sensational, Sean, and you know, defensively as well. Look, Louisville has gotten in a stance and I think sped Virginia up. Mm -hmm. What does Virginia now try? We've talked about all night Rick Pitino adjusting to a depleted lineup. If you're Tony Bennett, what can you do differently? A little bit of what Virginia or what Louisville is doing. Move the ball around before you go make a drive. You can't make one side of drives. Here's Allison Williams. Hey there, Sean. Dan mentioned pace and whether Louisville was able to speed Virginia up. And I asked Tony Bennett about that, and he said it was something that's hard to get a feel for. He really didn't have a solid answer one way or the other. One thing he does hope to answer, though, is some adjustments they need to make defensively, specifically on how they defend that high-low ball screen. He said Louisville did a good job of making tough shots. They really went off us on the dribble, so they have to be better in those regards. Yeah, the high ball screen hasn't really been a screen. It's been more of a slip, and Levitt's found him twice. Louisville went right inside, but Mahmoud couldn't finish. So here's Virginia, which had an early seven point lead. They came out of the gates well led 10 to 3. That wound up being the largest lead of the half for Virginia. Louisville's biggest lead was seven late in the first half at 32 to 25. Isaiah Wilkins. Bad pass. Try to get it through a lot of traffic to Jack Salt. Donovan Mitchell all the way. And he gets called for a travel. It's pretty good defense. Transition defense. First thing you have to do is guard the basket. The basket was guarded. Mitchell didn't have time to really kick it out, so he came to a stop walk. Devin Hall to Mariel Shayok. It's Salt, Parentes, and Wilkins beginning the second half. Parentes missed a corner three. Excellent rebound by Wilkins over Donovan Mitchell to poke it out. Parentes tries another three, and the lead for Virginia. Well, that was a great play, kicking the ball out and having enough patience to reverse it. Louisville didn't get back to Parentes. 14 of the 35 Virginia points from London Parentes, the senior from Los Angeles, first team all ACC in the preseason. Tough runner, and it wouldn't go for Jalen Johnson. And the crowd engaged here in the opening minute and a half of the second half after a mostly quiet first half. Shayok a step back two. And a timeout called by Rick Pitino. Used one in the first half before the first media timeout. And take one, takes one a minute and 46 seconds into the second half here in Charlottesville. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Proud sponsor of the 2017 John R. Wooden Player of the Year. And Ford Service. No one knows your Ford better than Ford and Ford service. The tourney presented by Sonic, our season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament. Strong start to the second half for Virginia. Of course, they opened the game 10-3, and then when 
into the locker room down by a couple. Ryan McMahon, B.J. King with 12 points in that first half. Mitchell's pass deflected up high by Parentas. He got it back to Mitchell for McMahon's three. Salt way up in the air for the rebound. Just much more aggressive. You know, the 5 0 run is a result of a couple of loose balls, which they got none, they being Virginia in the first half. Salt got a rebound in traffic. Again, not much of that in the first half either. Well, Virginia comes in having lost two of its last three. Road losses at Villanova was a great game. And the loss Saturday at Syracuse when they led by 12 at the half. Parentes off the mark, run down in the corner by Isaiah Wilkins and a full shot clock for UVA. Well, that cannot happen because McMahon did a great job on Parentes. It stymied the entire offense of Virginia, and then Johnson wasn't able to come up with a rebound. Boy, Shayok took a couple of bumps without a whistle. He scored. And the lead to five with 17 minutes to go. I thought he got bumped out on the court, then he got bumped when he shot it. Mitchell can't quiet the crowd. Rebound out to the free throw line to London Parentis. That's what I was talking about. Virginia, as you well know, is going to make you play at their pace. A little zone here, a little matchup right now by Louisville. Can't find the baseline runner. Salt called for a moving screen, his second foul. Well, Sayak is running the baseline, and then now he gets the matchup that he wants against Mahmoud. I thought he took a little bump oh, there, sure and took did. another little bump. Again, but Sean, you, you, you can't let the ball get into the middle of the floor. Even though he got bumped, you still can finish from the middle. You make him go to the baseline, he doesn't have anything. King, tough shot, drifting left, and he made it. He's a first pro. bucket of the second half he's for a, Louisville. He's impressive, shot. He sure is. Man, quick, lifts up, shoots it easy. Parentes underneath. And the short one miss. And then a Louisville foul in the follow up activity. He's a McDonald's All American, but he's going to be a pro. This is quick. This is a long kid who gets on balance and drills it. Don't let anybody in the middle of the floor. Sean, come on. Thursday night, Duke, North Carolina, UCLA, and Oregon. Here it's Louisville and Virginia on Big Monday starting rivalry week. Trouble on the catch and Hall loses it out of bounds. Well big games for both conferences. North Carolina alone atop the ACC as they get ready for their biggest rival. And UCLA and Oregon in the Pac-12 up there near the top. Arizona 10 and 1 off a surprisingly Lopsided defeat the other day at Oregon. Yeah, they got bombed. Oregon just came out and made everything. While you were napping last week, I was impressed with Duke. I thought Duke was pretty good. I think Duke is going to be a force here. I think it's going to be a heck of a game Thursday night with Carolina. Mm -hmm. I think, I think a lot Duke's of talent got, there. They've yeah. had some issues, some injuries, but they were the preseason pick to win the ACC, the Blue Devils. But you can't afford any more losses if you're in the middle of the pack right now in the ACC because Carolina probably isn't going to lose too many. Boy, Jack Salt's had a nice night. He has. He's had a really nice night. He's he's solidified things inside. He's rebounded in traffic. Seven zip rebounds to start this half. A lot of it is Jack Salt. And Levich called for the Louisville foul and Parentes makes the free throw. You know, the one thing you do worry about with Virginia, who's going to score if not Parentes? You know, like you get in a game where it's a little bit faster maybe than you want, this one in particular. Who, who, who are you going to look to? Thompson is streaky, as you said. Jack Salt can't go on the block.
That well, could be a real issue down, yep. down you the know, road. They've done it in the past, but they've had guys who you could count on, like Malcolm Brogdon, last year averaging 19 points per game, having a terrific rookie year for the Milwaukee Bucks. Levich tipped out to Mitchell. Attacking the bucket, King, and then Isaiah Wilkins blocked that shot. Virginia ball, the crowd doesn't like it. When a crowd's wrong, Teddy Valentine is right. He was right on it. 14-9, not agreeing, but he was right. Louisville one for eight in this half, but still within five. With 14 and a half minutes remaining, Sean McDonough, Dan Dockich, and Allison Williams from John Paul Jones Arena. It's 11th year now as the home of the Cavaliers, and they very rarely lose here. Mahmoud, nice move to the bucket, missed the shot. They're 38 and two the last five seasons, the Cavaliers in this building in ACC home games against the great competition they play in this conference. And a whistle for a foul away from the ball. It's on Levich, and that is his third, so he'll go out, and Ryan McMahon checks back in. Much cleaner half. Blocker mover. Here's what you're going to see from Virginia. You're going to see Salt on one block, Wilkins on the other block, and you're going to see the three perimeter guys interchanging, going underneath the bucket, coming out, coming to the top. It's two out three and kind of a triangle baseline runner look. You see right now, both guys curling. This is two uncharacteristic passes. We saw one earlier just into traffic. Virginia does not do that often. Well, and I think that's the answer to your question when they have guys who aren't prolific scores. That's the amazing thing to me about what Tony Bennett does year in, year out. I mean, here they are with this lineup. Nobody really dazzles you with his scoring ability. Parentes is a really nice player. But they're 17 and 5 in what many believe is the best conference in America. They're 7 and 3. And sometimes you wonder how you do it. But as you said, they don't turn it over. They don't foul. And they might be the best defensive team in the country. Don't you think in the past with Justin Anderson and Brogdon with Perennis in there, they, they they had guys that could score. At least I felt mm -hmm. like the scoring came a little easier. More to reliable. Play. Yeah. Four well, point the, game. The big kid, Toby, just got brought up to the NBA. He was. I did a game in here. He was terrific last year. Who was last year? I can't remember now. <laughs> but he just got brought up from the D League, so there's another NBA guy. They yeah, signed a 10 day deal with Charlotte, and Tony Bennett was so happy when we talked about that before the game. Salt at the rim. That's the guy, not Salt, but ha uh, Hall. Hall can score. Hall doesn't turn it over. He's the guy. Now he's 41 to 16 assist to turnovers. Believe they got salt for the foul. Well, they gave it to Wilkins, his first. When we talk about the offensive challenges for Virginia, they thought they were going to have Austin Nichols. Yeah. The transfer from Memphis, who would have been their best scorer. They threw him off the team before the year started, or at the beginning of the year. Mitchell. Long rebound. Three on two break. Hall passed it off. Thompson will shoot a couple of free throws as he got fouled by B.J. King. Well, I thought Hall made a bad play. I thought Hall should have just lifted up and gone at the rim. He ended up flipping it over to Thompson right here. He seemed to have everybody out of control. Could have split him. Made it a little more difficult than it needed to be. Mm -hmm. I just feel like Hall is the guy that can do a lot more offensively, whether it's scoring, rebounding, passing, because he can do all those things, shoot it well. Wilkins goes out. Darius Thompson will shoot his second foul shot. Mamadi Diakite has come in, and now Ty Jerome, the freshman, is going to return. 
Ted Valentine called a foul on the rebound. He saw the ball go in, and then I believe he's waving off the foul, not the point. Well, his signal was tough to ascertain. Mike Eads is going to come over. They do count the free throw. The, the free throw was good. It's what I just said. An inadvertent whistle. Ted was going to call a foul and then thought better of it. Ty Jerome takes it away. And it is slapped out of bounds by Levich. Tony Bennett thought that a foul should have been called. And now Jamie Lucky is gesturing not quite sure what it was all about but it's just a matter of time and Jamie's on the court and Ted Valentine too yeah, there's usually going to be some drama involving the officiating they're not <laughs> blending the woodwork kind of guys Diakite trouble on the catch. Freshman to freshman pass there. 11 to shoot for Virginia with an eight point lead, which is the largest of the night for Tony Bennett's Cavaliers. Got bailed out there. That was going to go out of bounds. That was a bad decision by Jerome looking at Diakite, but McMahon came over and bailed him. Trouble getting it in. Ooh. Ooh, tentative whistle, but Jerome got enough of a hit to get three, and that was a shot out of necessity, he felt, with the shot clock running out, and he got bailed out, to use your phrase. Fourth foul on Levich. I think there was like 10 seconds still going. You see seven, well, seven. seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there was still time, and Levich just came over too aggressive on a bad shot. There's Ty Jerome. Missed most of his high school season last year when he had hip surgery. And he's become more of a factor as the season's gone along as he's been healthier and has adjusted to their systems. Our next NBA Wednesday doubleheader starts at Madison Square Garden. The Clippers continuing their road trip against the Knicks. That's at seven, then it's the Bulls. Taking on KD, Steph, and the Warriors at Oracle Arena. Both games are on ESPN. Also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Nice hand for Salt as he goes to the bench. 7 0 run for Virginia, and Louisville in trouble now. It has historically struggled to score against Virginia, as so many opponents have, and they're down by 11. Mitchell to miss, last touched by Anas Mahmoud. You're just joining us. Louisville playing without two key cogs they thought they'd have tonight. Mango Mathiang, their second leading rebounder for the year, six points per game. Deng Adele has been terrific lately. Third leading scored 11 points per game, but off 19 in the win Saturday against Boston College, both suspended for violating curfew. On Saturday night, and they've been playing without Quentin Snyder, their starting point guard. Sixth game without him with a hip injury. Tony Hicks, a backup guard, out with a broken hand. A strong move to the goal. Wilkins will be at the free throw line when we come back. Second foul on the move. Good night for Parentes and the Cavaliers. Dan have opened up an 11 point margin. But he's the guy. And this guy right here is the guy. And he's getting favorable matchups. You get him on late on London Parentes, you're going to pay. He's the guy for Virginia. Yeah. Well, it's Big Monday. It's also the start of Rivalry Week. What a great rivalry coming up next. Kansas and Kansas State. Jayhawks, number three in the country, despite their loss to Iowa State over the weekend, and they're still in first place. I think we've been looking at that same graphic for about 15 years now. I, I think at least. And, you know, the surprise in that graphic is Baylor. Baylor's had a year. Jonathan Motley has been tremendous. It started in the Bahamas. And, you know, unranked, got all the way to number one, didn't last long.
Don't you feel self-conscious when you talk here when Virginia shoots free throw because it is totally silent. I, I, I heard the call next to us from the Louisville radio broadcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that would be us. People would hear us. You feel like you're distracting the shooter. Wilkins made the free throw. There's just a second field goal of the half for Louisville. They're now two for 12 after the floater by Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, the reason is not enough Donovan Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Donovan Mitchell has really been thwarted here in the second half by a bunch of guys. Wilkins inside. That is textbook offense. The screener, a little low screen. Cutter curls, goes right back to the screen. If you want to coach offense, you're a high school, grade school, whatever coach, just teach that. King, tough shot. He's had a quiet second half after a very nice first. Mariel Shayok, the rebound for Virginia. And when you play against the Cavaliers, the clock moves because there aren't that many whistles. They don't foul. And they take a lot of time with the ball on offense. Diakite, crowd groaned as he rose to shoot it, but they're not grooming anymore. As soon as he shot that, it was. Oh. Thirteen to two run for the home team. They're up by 15 with ten and a half to go. It is time for tonight's defensive spotlight brought to you by Michelin. Jack Salt. He's our spotlight. Look at this making my mood shoot around him and he's done that pretty much all night. Well, you expect defense out of everybody and the second half defense has led to loose balls at Virginia when guy. <laughs> he's hostile at timeout. I mean he was killing VJ King. A sharp contrast to the second halves of their last two losses. Wow, three way off. Particularly Saturday up at Syracuse when the Orange outscored Virginia 19 to 2 to start the second half. Good defensive transition by Louisville. Jalen Johnson then tried to finish it and he missed the dunk up the other end off the feed from Ryan McMahon. Loose ball. Thompson came up with it. Didn't happen in the first half. Parentes not on the floor right now, and the ball mishandled inside by Diakite. Here's Allison. Well, guys, I chatted with Virginia assistant Ron Sanchez during one of the timeouts, and he said the biggest reason they've been able to go on this run offensively is that they're taking care of the ball. Defensively, they've been guarding the action, and their health defense has been much better. They are implementing the halftime adjustments they talked about. Louisville is not, and Dan, you are right. Rick Pitino was all over VJ King. He said, you're not listening. You're not doing exactly what we just talked about. Mitchell hit on the arm. Ty Jerome didn't think so. If you're not listening, Rick will find a way to get your attention. Foul on Jerome, his first. He was very happy, by the way, uh, Rick Pitino. He's very uh, he's good friends with Bill Belichick. Because they overlapped a little bit in New England. Rick was the coach of the Celtics. Rick has had Coach Belichick down as his guest at the Kentucky Derby. An invite that I'm still trying to wiggle. Have you ever been to the Kentucky Derby? Yeah, but it was, awesome. it was in the infield. And it, 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 was Beneath long, your standards. It, it was a long time ago. <laughs> let's put it that. No, it fit my standards perfectly. Do you remember anything else about it? You're in the infield. I, I remember a few things that I'm not going to share on TV or anywhere else, but <laughs> it's a great, great time. Well, if the league continues to grow, we are going to get to the other three games that you were involved in that keep you up late at night. McMahon missed the runner, and this undermanned Louisville team. It's starting much. to show up the lack of options too much McMahon not enough Donovan Mitchell mm -hmm. you know you've got to credit Virginia a lot like what coach Belichick does he takes away what you do best and makes you play left handed and Donovan Mitchell can't get anything going. All right the driving in the middle jump bounce pass rarely works. Mm -hmm. and it might be leading to a substitution for Virginia. Jerome couldn't catch up to Mitchell got called for his second foul and he'll head out for Devin Hall. And the, uh, the 
McMahon exuberance offensively led to him coming out as well for leverage. Ooh. Mitchell hit on the yard. Boy, the way he reacted, it just looked like the ball slipped out of his hand. But he was fouled by Wilkins, his second. But you know, Sean, it was exactly what Allison said. The help was there. Watch the help come over. First half, he would have gotten to the rim. You see right there, there's Wilkins. I didn't. Mm. Yeah, Mitchell turned around as if he was surprised to hear the whistle. A little hoop scoop. Mitchell's dad's with the Mets, right? Mitchell's yes. dad's a scout. He, Mitchell said, and everybody says this, that he could have been a pro baseball player had he pursued that. You know, Randy Moss said he could have been a pro basketball. Everybody thinks they could be a pro in the other sport. Not everybody, but a lot of guys do. I saw Randy Moss play basketball. He was really good, mm -hmm. but he wasn't NBA good. Donovan Sr., as you said, involved in baseball They're from Greenwich, Connecticut. Donovan played up in New Hampshire, one of the best high school programs in the country at Brewster Academy. Jared Reuter, who plays for Virginia, has seen a little time tonight, was his teammate up at Brewster. Eight and a half to go. Virginia the ball in a 13 point lead. Shayok could not score inside. Louisville needs to score in a hurry, and that's tough to do against the Hoops. Well, everybody's got to play off this guy. Well, they've been calling it a little more tightly here, though that was a foul. Salt bouncing at the elbow, his third foul. Well, Sean, I say it all the time. Basketball is not a democracy. Basketball is shoot or shoot. Score, score, the rest of your screen. That's it. I mean, and in this half for Louisville, the guys who can score, VJ King and Donovan Mitchell, have played secondary roles to guys who can't. And that is never good. Mitchell's averaged 19.6 per game over the last 10. He is 14 tonight. They wanted to press this team throughout, but with the suspensions, unable to do it, and they might want to rethink this press. Diakite, the dunk. That's a coaching basket right there. Boston College was able to beat Louisville's press over the top. Two or three times, and you bet you the staff of Virginia saw that and went to it. Mitchell almost looked like he got away with a shove with his left hand of the defender, Parentes. Diakiti corrals it in traffic. 13 point lead, under eight minutes to go. How about that edge? Virginia almost doubling up. Louisville on the glass. Levich saved it. The jumper wouldn't go for Darius Thompson. King. Wow. That was impressive. Man, that was going 100 miles an hour. Stayed low. And when you stay low, you can stop and jump. When you raise up, you can't. The run out again. Darius Thompson with the dunk. Well, they worked on the press a lot because, as we said, before these suspensions, the Daniel Dell, Mango Mathiang, they were planning to play Virginia as West Virginia Mike pressed them the entire game make or miss but they had to throw the game plan out as of Saturday night when those two players violated curfew foul on Spalding his first six and a half to go Virginia by 13. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by eBay. Find new, unique, and everything in between on eBay. And in part by Chobani Flip, creamy Greek yogurt with the side of natural crunch.
and Jaguar, the art of performance. And after the game, we won't only be looking it up, we will be watching Kansas and Kansas State and then the Sports Center at night with John Bucci Gross and John Anderson. They'll have all the highlights, breakdowns, in college basketball, the NBA, the NHL, they'll put a bow on Super Bowl 51, everything else you want to know, Sports Center at night after Big Monday Hoops on ESPN. Were those people dressed up as Thomas Jefferson, who I believe was the founder of the University of Virginia. They're either Thomas Jefferson or Bill Raftery. I'm not sure which. <laughs> I'm just going with they were the founding fathers. Founding I'm not smart enough to know which guy was who. And, but they look Jeffersonian. Jeffersonian. What a beautiful university, a great college town this is. What a beautiful day. Oh, it's in the 60s here today. Honest Mahmoud. Swings to the bucket and gets fouled. Diakite called for the foul, his second. That's going to be a good game coming up after us. Kansas State at home. They have a little knack for knocking off top ten teams. Five of the last seven top ten opponents have gone in there, have lost. Were you shocked? So hold on a second. Yeah. We have breaking news. My fault. I don't want to interrupt you. Anas Mahmoud speaks four languages. He's from Egypt. The, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really kind of sorry I interrupted you for that. I no. expected a little more out of Hoop Scoop. It set such a high standard so far. I forgot what we were talking about. Oh, I'm sorry. We're still trying to speak one language correctly. And not very effectively. Under six minutes to go, five on the shot clock. Not sure Hall realizes the shot clock. Now he does and fires an air ball. Well, maybe what I said about Hall earlier isn't accurate. Maybe he should just stay doing what he's doing. I said he needed to do more. Who did? I did. What about whom? Hall. Hall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that time he had to shoot it because the shot clock was running. Yeah, but he tried to get by Levitch and he couldn't do it. You've got to be able to get by Levitch if you're going to do more. Not that Levitch can't defend. He's, he's a much better athlete. <laughs> But he's a better uh, handicapper than a defender. Is the that best, what you're saying? The best. For those who weren't here earlier. B.J. King. Yeah, you, know, you gotta like a guy that the coach just rips, and he he doesn't sulk. You know, he's a freshman. He's learning. He's learning that when you don't perform, Coach Patino's gonna get after you. But that's what you signed up for. That's what great coaches do. And good for King. Career high for King with 20, his previous best 17 against William and Mary in his second game of the year. Oh, Diakiti spinning like a top. Oh, well, it didn't look like it was going to end in a bucket, but some nice work down low. Darius Thompson, Isaiah Wilkins, and the lead 14 with under five to go. <laughs> Sean, that had turnover and fall down written all over it. Mahmoud, that's a foul in any language. On Diakite. It's a little double pump dunk. A little right here. He kind of hung on into the air. This is pretty good. The adjustment right here. Guy comes over. He hangs in there, swings it around. That was a bad possession that turned out great. Yes. Looked like a disaster waiting to happen. Mahmoud barely grazed the front rim. Both teams are in the bonus. Hall. He thought he was fouled. Threw his arms in the air. Mitchell. And some on the Louisville bench thought that should have been a foul on Diakite. Yeah, but Diakite hustled. He stayed with the play and made a great defensive play. He's from Africa, went to high school just about a half hour away from here. 
in Charlottesville. He attended the Blue Ridge School in Virginia. That's just give up right there. I mean, when you can hold on to the basketball, I mean, Levitz was trying. He just got whipped, and nobody came over to help. That's just a team that's standing around watching right now for Louisville. 18 for Parentes, a bucket away from his fourth 20 point game of the year. Spalding blocked by Diakite. Thompson decides to attack, and a good idea. Hold oh, the dunk. King. Thompson thought he got the ball. Jamie Lucky did not concur. Second foul on Thompson. Well, when they can do this, they're very dangerous. Great block right here. Great timing by Diakite, and then he tips it out, and everybody's running. They are so well schooled, Virginia, is it making the right pass at the right time to conclude the break? Stop at the free throw line, make your play. Virginia does it better than anybody. Seven by 350. Mm. Virginia trailed by two at the half, but the Cavs have blitzed the cards here in the second half. They're about to go to eight and three. And be a game out of first in the ACC. North Carolina setting the pace at nine and two. Virginia about to go to eight and three. They'll be tied with. Florida State. How about Syracuse? Man. I mean, it looked like when we saw them a couple weeks ago on Big Monday, they were going nowhere fast, and all of a sudden they've won four games in a row, including Saturday against Tony Bennett, the Cavaliers, Jim Beheim's 1,000th career win. Of course, the NCAA had them vacate 101 wins, so they recognize 899. Yeah, well, I'm biased. I'm a Syracuse graduate. Whether it applies to Syracuse or anything else, I think vacating wins is the stupidest punishment I've ever heard. I, I am biased. I married the Syracuse softball coach, but I think vacating wins is the stupidest thing that it's you stupid. can do. It's the dumbest it's punishment that you can possibly get. It messes give. up everybody's record keeping, too. And, and it, <laughs> it just doesn't, it serves no purpose. And you know what? But I, I just, also think if you're going to do that, at least take away the losses. You know, if the, the wins didn't exist, why, why should the losses exist? Which there are a lot of us in TV that would have liked them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you think you have to punish people, so we can get into the merits of what they did or didn't do. And if the punishment fit the crime, again, I plead bias so I won't try you know, to make that argument even though I think it's convincing from but a basketball perspective wins. from a basketball perspective it looks to me like the two guys on top for Syracuse Gillen and then battle they look far more comfortable playing that zone like they would not let they would not let Virginia get the ball into the middle and Andrew White I I had him in the Big Ten man that dude can really play transfer fifth year guy I think Syracuse reports of their demise, man, greatly exaggerated. Well, they were picked to be fifth in the ACC when the year started. Didn't look a couple weeks ago like they'd live up to that, but they might. Some other headlines from the ACC. Coach K returned Saturday from back surgery about a month away. There was that emotional win for Jim Beheim. He called it one of the biggest wins they've had. So much respect for Tony Bennett and for Virginia. And of course, the game postponed Chapel Hill. Saturday to Greensboro on Sunday because of an issue with a water main and North Carolina beat the Notre Dame team that's starting to fade a little bit. Speaking of Syracuse we'll see them next week on Big Monday from the fabulous Carrier Dome against this Louisville Cardinal team and then the next two Big Mondays after that will be right here in Charlottesville. I, I should know this and no, I do know it never mind. I, I was going to. I was going to ask you because I was watching the game and it didn't hit me until just this moment why the 31 is on the court, but that's Pearl Washington. Pearl Washington. Yeah, it just that hit was me right about now. the spot. I was at that game uh, where he hit the half court shot to beat Boston College. You One guys of the did basically. Games I've ever seen. You basically did every Syracuse Georgetown game over the years. Those were fun Jay days back in the early and mid 80s. The heyday of the Big East, the early days of the Big East. That Georgetown Syracuse rapper is amazing. BC. Uh, was going to win the game and uh, you know the legend kind of has a pearl as he released the ball started 
toward the tunnel to his right by the end of the bench. And if I remember correctly, he said he knew it was going to go in. And he knew they were going to storm the court. He basically <laughs> wanted to get in the locker room as fast as he could. That great. That's probably the loudest I've been at hundreds of events in the carry dome. And I think that's still the loudest I've ever heard it. Do you think when Jim Beheim leaves, that's sustainable at that level? I do. Do you? I do. I mean, I think he's obviously one of the all-time great coaches. But you know, I think there's a lot to love about the university. I think they'll continue to recruit at a high level. I have tremendous respect for Mike Hopkins. I do too. Person as a recruiter. I think he'll be a terrific head coach. He's got a great staff around him. Thompson. Does this mean now I don't have to send an alumni donation this year for that commercial? Uh, I, that I don't know did? what this was worth. We'll have to ask Darren Ravel. It's a great university. It's a great school. I've never met anybody who went to school there who didn't love it. I tell friends of mine all the time, my son or daughter wants to apply to Syracuse, that you should tell them to do it. You know, my wife tells me, like, we live in Indianapolis, and she's like, look, I'm just telling you, there's a lot more snow, but there's no wind. So people complain about the weather. You complain about the snow, not necessarily the temperature. I don't buy that. <laughs> <laughs> well, she probably had to use that with recruits. Kansas and Kansas State coming up next. An important win for Virginia. And probably a predictable result for Louisville without four key players. The good news is they think they're going to have Quentin Snyder back for the game Saturday. And that'll be a tough one at home against Miami. This is the sixth game he's missed. He's their point guard to so many things so well for Louisville and they'll get the two suspended players back who we violated curfew may, may Saturday I, night you know those two players it, it's in, unfathomable to me how you can do that how you can let your teammates down you go through the summer and you work out you go through the offseason and the workouts coach Patino kills you you get in the stretch of your schedule and you just don't care about your teammates and one of them's a captain for crying out loud it, 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 it never ceases to amaze me what college athletes do, but that one's a shocker because it wasn't like you had a big turnover. You played Saturday, you got home, the coach is happy with you, and instead of just doing whatever you need to do in your own room, you go out and act like an idiot, come home four hours late. And as Rick Pitino said, well, first of all, he told them on the bus when they got to the facility, go home. Right. We're going to practice early tomorrow, get your rest. We have a big game. And as he said, in this day and age of camera phones and social media, your Louisville basketball players, you go out in town, it's going to get noticed. There's no question. So to think you were going to get away with being out at the curfew. You know, the, if I were a player on Louisville, I, obviously you're disappointed in this, but I'd be hostile at those two guys. I, the kids don't get mad at each other as much anymore, but my goodness, did, you, did those two guys mess up their teammates? So UVA's won four in a row head to head against Louisville in five of the last six. And as usual, they hold them to a point total under Louisville's average 55 points. They had 34 at the half, did the Cardinals. King at 24, a career high for Louisville. Parentes led Virginia with 18 points. Virginia outscored Louisville 39-21 in the second half. Final score, Virginia 71, Louisville 55. Now for Allison Williams, Dan Dockage, who speaks in four languages. Sean McDonough saying good night from Charlottesville, Virginia. Coming up next, Kansas and K-State, but first back to the studio.